In this video, we're going to look at more curve analysis, but we're going to look at it with a slightly different approach. So in this first example, I'm going to give you some information. I'm actually going to give you three examples. I'm going to give you some information, and I'm going to ask you to sketch the curve. This is more along the lines of the way an AP exam might look. Um, so I just want to give you some practice with this. So why don't you take a moment, looking at all of the information given here, and see if you can sketch a curve that meets all of these requirements. Now before you start sketching the curve, write out in words what each of these pieces of information are telling you about f of x. So write about it first, what, what is each of these things telling you about the function, then sketch the curve. Okay, pause the video, go do that. Welcome back. Okay, let's just analyze these things. Um, the first two lines here are telling us that f of x, oh, of course my pencil's not working. Anyway, those first two lines are telling you that f of x has some points on the curve, and we know those points specifically. So that first one is written in kind of a strange way. f of negative 2 equals f of 3 equals 1. So what this means is that there are points on the curve at negative 2, when x is negative 2 and x is 3, and the y value of both of those is 1. So for these two lines of, of information, we've got that f has points at negative 2 comma 1, 3 comma 1, and 0 comma negative 3. So those are just ordered pairs. Okay, on this next line, f prime of negative 2 equals f prime of 0 equals f prime of 3, which all equals 0. So what that's telling us is that the slope of f at those values equals 0. So the slope of f at x equals negative 2, 0, and 3 is 0. Now let's think about the implications for that. If the slope is zero, we could have potential maximum or minimum point, relative max, relative min. These are the, what we call critical numbers. So these critical numbers, these are the places where we could potentially have relative extrema. Not guaranteed, we have to check other things first, but that's a potential. Okay, if we go on to the next one now. f prime of x is greater than zero on those two intervals. So if we know that f prime of x is greater than zero, we know that f is increasing on that interval, on those intervals. Okay, the next line down, f prime of x is less than zero on those two intervals. What we know about that then, since the derivative is negative, we know that f is decreasing. All right, the next two lines are talking about the second derivative. Second derivative measures concavity, if the function is concave up or down. Since the second derivative is positive on that first interval, we know that f is concave up. On the next two intervals, the second derivative is negative, so we know that f is concave down. I would recommend you always take the time to analyze like this, in words, because it kind of helps you think through what's happening. So if we use all of that information, we're going to sketch this curve. Notability, thank you for the straight line. Okay, I'm going to plot the points. Negative 2, 1 is here. 3, 1 is here. 0, negative 3 is here. So those are the first two lines of information. We know that there are potential for um, extrema at those three points. Those are our critical numbers. So that's the potential. We'll have to figure out what's going on there shortly. All right, let's look at the first interval from negative infinity to negative 2. The function is increasing, and from negative infinity to negative 1, the function is also concave down. 
So we need to think about drawing this graph so that the function is increasing and concave down at the same time. So increase to that point and concave down at the same time. Okay, from negative two to zero then, on our next interval, we know that the function is decreasing, still concave down until we hit negative one, and then the concavity switches here at negative one. What do we call that point when the concavity changes? I hope you're thinking about it. We call this a point of inflection. At x equals negative one because the concavity is changing there. Okay, so about negative one then I need to change my graph so that I start to make this more concave up, but still decreasing until we get to zero. So concave down, now I'm going to switch it to be concave up and we get to zero. All right, let's see then. From zero to three, the function is increasing. And from zero to 1.5, the function is still concave up, but then switch, switches at 1.5 to be concave down. So we have another point of inflection because the concavity is changing. This time at x equals 1.5. Okay, increase until I get to 1.5 and, and increase and concave up until I get to 1.5, then switch to concave down. And then finally, we're concave down from 3 to infinity and decreasing from 3 to infinity. There's our function. Okay, let's analyze this a little bit. We said that negative 2, 0, and 3 were potential relative extrema. That's where the slope of the function was zero. So let's take a look at this, and we can see that those are definitely relative extrema, but let's be a little bit more um, exact about why. So the relative, we had relative maximum. At two different points, we had a relative maximum at negative two, one, and at 3, 1. And we had a couple reasons for that. First of all, f prime of x was equal to 0. If the derivative wasn't equal to 0, we couldn't have an extrema there. And then the second thing that was true is that f prime of x changed sign. At these points, you have to have both of those criteria. The slope must equal zero in this situation, and the derivative must change sign. Just saying the slope is zero is not enough. The slope has to change from positive to negative. Okay, that was the first one. Let's go on to a slightly more interesting one. Take a moment. Write out the... the Analysis first, what does each line tell you about the function? And then try and sketch it. I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay, welcome back. Let's talk about what's going on here. F of three is undefined. There are two possibilities here. And until we know more about the graph, right now we just have to think about these two possibilities. So f of 3 is undefined. The two options for that is that f has a whole or a vertical asymptote. Ran out of room there. So f either has a whole or a vertical asymptote if we're undefined at x equals 3. Okay, the limit as x approaches infinity from the right and from the left what is that telling you about a function? As x gets really, really large, the y value is going to zero. That means that f has a horizontal asymptote at zero. Oops, 
it's not x equals zero, at y equals zero, sorry. So there's a horizontal asymptote on this function at y equals zero. Wow. Okay, now this next line is what we talked about before. F prime of x is less than zero everywhere, except at three itself, because that point doesn't exist on the function. So f is always decreasing. Okay, I can see that the second derivative is less than zero on that first interval. So then we know that f is concave down. I should have left myself a little more space here. Why don't I just do that? f is concave down. And then on this last line there, f double prime of x is greater than zero on that interval, so we know that f is concave up. Well, it's nice to have a little more space. Okay, so this is going to be interesting. Somehow f always has to be decreasing, always, which rules out a hole, because if we just have a hole in the graph, then it would be difficult to, to say that the function is always decreasing. Let me show you what I mean. So let me draw the horizontal asymptote. And actually draw the asymptote. Don't just let your graph approach it, but make it very clear that you are aware that we have an asymptote here, <clears throat> pardon me, at zero. Okay, I know, and I'll, you'll see why here shortly, this has got to be a vertical asymptote, so I'm going to draw that in as well. And in order for this function to be decreasing always, we have to have that asymptote. And so on the left side of 3 from negative infinity to 3, the function's concave down. The function's going to look like this. And for the function to always be decreasing, we're going to make it look like that. Do we have any relative extrema? Are there any high points or low points? It kind of looks like we're approaching zero here, you know, because we've got an asymptote, but we're approaching zero. We don't ever actually equal zero. So we're not, a, we're not, we don't have a lowest point on the function. What about a maximum? This maximum, we, we're going to infinity. Infinity is not a point that we can actually reach. So f has no relative extrema. There are no points here where the, the first derivative changes sign either. So f has no relative extrema. Okay, let's talk about points of inflection. There is a place where the concavity changes. At 3, the function changes from concave down to concave up. But it's not a point on the graph. So instead of saying point of inflection, we say f has a change in concavity. at x equals 3. It's not a point on the graph, but there is a place on this function where the concavity changes. Okay, here's one more. This one's even more strange than the last one. Go give it a shot and come right back. Okay. On this one, we've got some information. There is a point on f of x at 3, 0. Notice the difference in this one. As x approaches very, very small numbers, the function approaches the y value 3. That still means there's a horizontal asymptote. It's just that we're only approaching 3 on the left side of the graph, not the right. So we still have a horizontal asymptote. f has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3. The derivative undefined can happen in so many different ways. 
I'm gonna ask you to pause the video again here and think about, I can think of at least four different places or instances where the derivative would be undefined, where the function is not differentiable. So pause for a minute and think about at least four different ways. Okay, the four different ways I'm thinking of, and we could put a five in there, but we'll, I'll talk about that in just a second. We could have a hole in the function. If the point on the function does not exist, then there is no instantaneous rate of change at a point that does not exist, which would mean that if we have a vertical asymptote, we have the same situation. Another possibility where a derivative is, or a function, the derivative is undefined or not differentiable is at an endpoint on a graph because we can't have a slope from both the right and the left if we're at an endpoint. And then the fourth one that I'm thinking of is on a cusp. At a cusp, that cusp is a sharp corner. And on that sharp corner, the derivatives are not approaching one single value. The other, the fifth one that could be a potential is a jump discontinuity. The thing about a jump discontinuity is that that's really has an endpoint and a hole in it. So it's, it's kind of the same thing, but it's still good to think about that. If there's a jump discontinuity, then the derivative won't exist. Dot contin, I, whoa, I am spelling that so wrong. Discontinuity, there we go, wow. All right, let's look at this next line and kind of combine two things here. F prime of x is less than zero and F double prime of x is less than zero. That means that F is decreasing and concave down. On that interval. Definitely didn't leave myself enough room. Okay, and then on the next one, F prime of x is greater than zero and the second derivative is greater than zero. So in this case, f is increasing and concave up. Okay, graphing this is going to be really interesting. So we know that we have a point on this function at three, zero. We know we have a horizontal asymptote at three, but we'll only approach that horizontal asymptote from the left side of the graph. So let's think about that left side of the graph. The, from the left, the function is decreasing, concave down, and approaches the horizontal asymptote. And we need to think about the fact that f prime of three is undefined as well. So we've got a couple options. Since that point exists, since three comma zero is a point on the graph, that rules out a hole and a vertical asymptote. We know that the function continues on from three to infinity, so that also rules out an endpoint. So we either have a cusp here or a jump discontinuity. So let's graph it as though this were a cusp. We're going to approach this asymptote, decrease and concave down all at the same time. And then we need to be increasing and concave up from there. We don't have to worry. We're making a cusp, so a sharp corner. We don't have to worry about that asymptote. So if this were a cusp, that's what the graph would look like. If this were a function that had a jump discontinuity, then it could look like this. Okay, let's talk about extrema. I'm going to go back to the cusp because that's a little bit more interesting. Um, let's go back to the cusp. So here we go. Let's talk about extrema. Let's talk about concavity. So we can see that we have a, a minimum, a relative minimum right here at this point. Now before, when we were talking about extrema, the relative max and min on that first problem, we were looking at the fact that the slope was zero. But in this case, we have a relative minimum, but the slope is not zero, the slope is undefined. 
So this is a slightly different approach then. In order for us to have a relative minimum here, we need to know that the derivative is undefined. So we've got a couple dis different situations. I'll we'll wrap all of these up here in just a minute. And that the derivative changes sign. Okay, let's look at the, the concavity, the change in concavity. Is there an actual point of inflection? There is a point on this graph where the function changes concavity. So yes, we have a point of inflection also at x equals 3. Okay, that point of inflection occurred because the first derivative is undefined, which makes the second derivative undefined as well. Because if the first derivative doesn't exist, the second derivative cannot exist. So we can say that f double prime of x is undefined because f prime is undefined. And, and the second derivative changes signs as well. Okay, I'm going to shrink this down a little bit because we need to formalize what we just figured out in this video. So what we figured out is this. In order for there to be critical numbers, or, or relative extrema, I'm going to move this down because I know I need some space for my concavity. We have just learned that f prime of x must equal 0 or f prime of x must be undefined. And then the other crucial part is that f prime of x must change sign. Okay, important to note. Second thing we've we learned is that changes in concavity or points of inflection can occur in a couple situations as well. That's either where the second derivative is equal to zero or where the second derivative is undefined, like in that cusp, or like in the vertical asymptote on the second example. But the thing that must go along with that is that f double prime of x must change sign. OK, that's it. That was a lot there. But it was good to kind of show all of those situations where this can come up. Now go practice with the homework.